How should I begin? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord Jesus, forgive me for stealing and behaving like a sinful thief. I'm ashamed of myself, and I won't do it again. From now on, I'll be honest and honourable. Amen. God Almighty, have mercy on me and forgive me for committing the terrible sin of taking a life. Grant me mercy and let me find peace. I beg you. Amen.
yourself.
My, this one has seen better days. I ought to tell someone about it. But now, almighty God, please grant us peace that we may rebuild this little shrine. And maybe Scalitz too. Amen. And forgive me, God, for sinning with Lady Stephanie. Amen. To pray for Ma and Pa. Mary, Holy Mother of God, please intercede for my parents. They never did anything wicked. Pray that their souls may find peace in God's kingdom. Amen.
Lord Jesus, I often drank and indulged more than I should have. Please help me overcome my intemperance. Amen. So, I made it this far. Ave Maria, gratia plena. Mm. I don't know the rest in Latin. But she'll understand my native tongue too, won't she? Holy Mary, Queen of Heaven, merciful Mother, just Virgin, loving, yes, loving and, uh, and forgiving. Please look down on me and hear me, a great sinner. I want to say sorry and repent, to do penance for, for being such a villain and for all the terrible things I did. I have sinned terribly. I killed a man, Runt. He was a criminal and a murderer and he, he deserved it, but I shouldn't have killed him even though he deserved it. It's not for me to judge and punish others. It was a sin, committed in anger, and it burdens my soul. Please forgive me, and let me make amends. And I killed other people too. Oh, merciful Mother of God. Sometimes righteously, sometimes I had to, but sometimes... I was simply overcome by anger and... Oh, please forgive me. And I did all sorts of wicked deeds. I lied and, and stole and behaved like a villain and a thug. I'm truly sorry for my deeds. And I promise I won't do them again. And I'll make a donation to the church to make amends for everything. And I have fornicated. I'm ashamed of it. But I'll be more virtuous from now on, I promise. Well, as I said, I have sinned. But at heart, I'm not a bad person. I know I failed in some of the trials you sent me, but please, give me a chance to make amends. I beg your forgiveness, Almighty God. Please forgive a humble sinner, as Jesus Christ forgave those who nailed him to the cross. Mother of God, intercede with God for the souls of my parents and let them find mercy in the kingdom of heaven. They were honest people who didn't deserve what happened to them. 
and I promise I'll be virtuous, the most virtuous of men, so as not to bring shame to their memory. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in Celis, sanctificet sancti in Romano, God be with you. I want to make a donation to the church as a token of repentance for the things I did wrong. Here you are. And I gladly accept your offering, my son. I'll pray for your forgiveness. But I'm curious, how come you got so devout all of a sudden? Has something happened? Johanka sent me to do penance to the Virgin Mary and make a donation to her church. Johanka? Yes, Father. It's a, it's a long story. Not to worry, lad. I had to listen to a lot of long stories at the university in Prague. Each of the masters tried to speak longer than the others so as not to appear less learned. I can handle it, believe me. All right. If you like. Johanka is a girl from Skalitz. I've known her since, well, all my life. But recently, some, um, peculiar things have been going on. Haven't they everywhere? These are dark times. No, wait, though. This is something different. The Virgin Mary has been appearing to Johanka. What? Are you serious? Yes. Our Lady visits her in her dreams and shows her, well, I don't know what. Johanka says the Virgin tells her some some words of wisdom, and wants her to pass them on to the people. Good Lord. What does she show her? Tell me. Well, once she preached to the people about how we were all sinners and must repent. Otherwise, beasts of hell would come for us and rip us to pieces. Something like that. But if we're virtuous, Our Lady will drive the beasts away, save us. Of course, when Johanka speaks, it sounds a lot better, really. She speaks completely differently than she usually does. Like... Well, like some kind of angel. Damn. That sounds very... Uh, I don't know, Henry. You wouldn't be making it up by any chance. Couldn't believe it myself at the start. And now you do? Uh, I'm not really sure to tell the truth. I see. Hmm. Well, that is really extraordinary. And what do the people think of all this? Well, the people of Sasau go to listen to her. Well, some of them. That's interesting. Very interesting indeed. The masters of Prague ought to hear this. Some might even agree. And what about you, Henry? What do you think of it? Me? I... I really don't know what to make of it. But your hanker would never lie. And what do you think? You're a learned man. It's hard to say. Maybe I should go to Sasso and see for myself. Thank you for telling me, lad. One thing is certain, though. There are interesting times ahead. That you can be sure of. More interesting than now. Don't know if I'll be able to handle that. Anyway, I should get back to your hunker. 
I shouldn't keep her waiting. God be with you, Father. Wait a moment. You came here the whole way from Sasso on foot? I did. I made a pilgrimage of penance. I stopped to pray at every shrine and cross along the way. By the way, that shrine before Talmberg, by the path from Sasau, I don't know what happened to it, but someone should see to getting it fixed. You noticed, eh? Yes, I know about that. It's just that there hasn't been the means to get it fixed, see? It just occurred to me, this affair with Johanka reminds me of a manuscript I made a copy of once. You might find it interesting. If you want, you can come with me and I'll find it for you. Or stop by the Presbytery later. All right, Father. Thanks. See you later. Huh? Where could I have put it? I knew it was a mistake to put it in a safe place. Ah, here it is. About that manuscript, Father. Ah, excellent. Look, I found it. Copied excerpts from the work of Magister Parisiensis. The who? Matthew of Yanov, the master of Paris as he was known. He studied there, he was a university master, he traveled a lot and was very learned. Hmm. Did I tell you about Jan Hus? Oh yeah. I'm not likely to forget that in a hurry. Ha <laughs> ha, right, me neither. Anyway, as I was saying, Hus wasn't alone, see? There are other masters who have similar ideas, just that Hus knows how to talk about it better than anyone. But this Matthew, he was one of those who thought much the same as Hus. And what use will that be to me? I can't say, but it came to mind when you were talking about Johanka, because Matthew wrote about similar things, about women who had visions and the like. I've got a copy here. I'll lend it to you if you promise to bring it back. You do know how to read, don't you? Of course I do. By Christ, lad, you're a regular scholar. Here you are, then. I'm sure it's in good hands. You can bring it back to me when you're passing again. Ah, all right, thanks. You're welcome, lad. Now run along and don't keep your honk awaiting. Radishes, carrots, and apples that will put a smile on your face. Eat! Eat! Thank you. Ah. Oh. That's good. Uh. showed him. Thank you, that thieving magpie. 
You can't trust anyone these days. Ahem. <clears throat> and just so you know, I'm no pinch purse. Here's a small reward. Thanks. Yeah! Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah.
snooping around here for? Clear off. Where's your hunker? She's locked up at the rat house. Orders of the bishop. Locked up? For what? For heretical speeches. Run along now. If you want to chat about it, go and talk to that monk who smells like an apothecary shop. He's in a flap about it too. Good luck then. What happened to your hunker? Nothing good, I'm sorry to say. She was locked up by the Papal Inquisitor Bishop Yaroslav of Beneshov. It seems he somehow caught wind of this preaching of hers. He's accused her of spreading heresy and had her placed under arrest. Jesus Christ! What's gonna happen to her? I don't know, Henry. It all depends on the Inquisitor and how he decides. The accusations brought against Johanka are very serious. Right. I'll go and see this Bishop Yaroslav of Beneshov. May God go with you. And thank you, Henry. I'm glad you're standing up for your hanker. If you need anything, do come and see me. Where can I find this Inquisitor? He's staying here in the monastery grounds. His quarters are on the upper floor. What actually happened here? Your hanker told me you went to Auschwitz? Yeah? What's that got to do with anything? The Inquisitor showed up here not long after you left. Apparently he heard about your hanker's preaching somehow. He even observed one of her sermons outside the town in disguise. He had her brought to him and spent a long time trying to discourage her from what she was doing. But then she went out again to preach about her visions outside of town. But before she even started, the Inquisitor turned up with Fabian and the guards. He said Johanka had ignored his outright ban, and he had her taken away. Then he warned the people there that Johanka was spreading heresy and undermining the church's authority, and forbade them to listen to her. That's all? Didn't you speak to the Inquisitor? Ah. Uh. No, actually, I didn't. He saw me there listening to her preaching, and I, uh, I was afraid to come forward and talk to him. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, that's understandable. Thanks. It sounds pretty serious. It is. I'm afraid it could be very serious indeed. What exactly does an Inquisitor do? The Inquisition is a papal institution that deals with heresy. So people don't succumb to charlatans, false prophets and deceptions, and put their faith and their immortal souls in jeopardy. The Inquisitors have all sorts of powers. The kind we here can do very little to stand up to. And what can he do to your hunker? I'm not entirely sure. These legal issues are very complicated, but he could certainly excommunicate her, and maybe even sentence her to death. Who is this Bishop Yaroslav? I've never heard of him before, but the prior has. He said he's very well learned and the Bishop of Sarepta. Sarepta? Where's that? Moravia? No, it's far, far away, near the Holy Land. He got the title from the Holy Father himself. And this bishop came all the way here from Sar... whatever. Sir Repta. But I doubt he's ever been there. It used to be a bishopric in the days of the Apostolic Fathers in Phoenicia, near Israel. But it was ransacked by the Muslims. Now it's just a titular bishopric. And Yaroslav is the titular bishop. Titular bishop? Like he's not a real one? It's, let's say, an honorary title. It refers to a diocese that no longer exists. And since a titular bishop has no diocese to oversee, he can devote himself to handling other very important church affairs, like ordaining other prelates, for example, 
to maintain succession through the centuries down from the time of Christ and his apostles. Do you believe Yahanka is really being visited by the Virgin Mary? Well, yes, Henry, I do. The things she says and the way she speaks. She doesn't sound like herself at all. I know she can't read, so where else could she have got it? Frankly, I can't think of any other explanation within the bounds of this world. May the Lord watch over you. <laughs> Goodbye. So, I am... Henry of Scarlet, from the garrison of the Royal Hetman, Sir Radzig Kobila. I've heard a lot about you, my son. I'm pleased to meet you. Bishop Yaroslav, uh, sir, my lord, to what do I owe your interest in my humble self? I was told you survived the massacre in Scarlet and warned the Townburg garrison. You tracked down the raiders of a stud farm in Neuhof, wasn't it? To their hideout in the woods. And then you led Sir Radzig and his armed company there and joined bravely in the skirmish and even killed their notorious leader by your own hand. And I believe you have many other deeds to your name. That's quite remarkable, considering your age, is it not? Well, you're too kind, Monsignor. I'm just trying to do what's right and what's needed. Quite rightly, too, my son. I expect we'll be hearing more about you. But I assume you didn't come here to exchange pleasantries. Or am I mistaken? No, Monsignor. You're quite right. I'm here about your hanker. Naturally. I'd be quite surprised if it were otherwise. So, tell me what's on your mind. Why did you have her imprisoned? Because she broke the promise she made to me, and persisted in actions that bear the signs of heresy. How did you find out about Yanka? Word came to me of what was happening here. 
that some young girl was claiming to speak for the Blessed Virgin. I traveled here immediately, as my duty demanded, and observed events in Sassau incognito, in order to examine the matter at first hand. I see. And what will happen to Yahanka now? I must weigh the gravity of her transgressions and investigate these alleged visions of hers. I consider it very improbable that she is indeed being visited by the Blessed Virgin. Nevertheless, I cannot at this time rule it out entirely. So you think it could be true? In that case, Johanka hasn't done anything wrong. It's not that straightforward. Even if her visions were real, she was at fault for interpreting them as she saw fit and preaching to the people. So you decide just like that? But you don't even know Yohanka. I certainly do not decide just like that. I'm thoroughly examining the entire matter, and you would be well advised not to question my authority. I will call Yohanka and the witnesses, question them, and then pronounce a verdict. And will there be anyone there to defend Yohanka? Do you doubt my judgment? I would never be so bold, sir. But surely it would be only just that someone should speak for Yohanka about all her good deeds and so forth? Naturally, I will also question those who would speak in her defense. Since you are interceding, I expect you have someone in mind? Yes. Actually, me. As I surmised. But this matter does not directly concern you. Why should I allow you to appear before the court? Johanka is my neighbor, and I have a Christian duty to come to her aid. I can't just stand by and do nothing. I have to concur with you on that. Your concern seems sincere, so I will grant your request. Very well. You will defend Johanka. You may speak in her defense if you so wish, and you may also bring witnesses. I will question any such witnesses, and naturally I shall question Johanka too. Thank you, Monsignor. In that case, I'll need to speak to Johanka first. That won't be possible. It's forbidden by the Inquisition procedure. Until the entire matter is resolved, Johanka can speak only to me and no one else. I would like to expedite the matter. The trial will take place in Sassau Church in three days' time at the latest. Come and let me know when you're ready to proceed. In the meantime, I will continue my investigation. Very well, Monsignor. I had better get on with it then, sir. Farewell. Before you go, you know Johanka longer than anyone else. You spent a lot of time with her, as I've discovered. Tell me, my son, truthfully, what do you think of this whole affair? Johanka is an honest girl, and virtuous. She's a good Christian, who attends church and thinks of others. Good. Please continue. She's worried about Matthias. He's from Skalitz too, and she's very fond of him. But he was wounded in a raid on Merhoyed recently, and since then he's been lying in a fever. Johanka believes that if she does what the Blessed Virgin wants of her, Matthias might be healed. Hmm. Interesting. Anything else? Johanka helped a lot of people. She worked her fingers to the bone helping Brother Nicodemus with the sick and injured. That is certainly commendable. What else can you tell me about her? About the Virgin Mary? I... I believe the Virgin does visit her. Johanka is honest. She wouldn't lie about such a thing. And the things she says sound truthful and compelling. It really does seem like a heavenly revelation. Who else could it be from? But the Virgin Mary. The origin of these so-called visions of hers must be investigated. But thank you for your candor. Is there anything else you can tell me? That's about all I can tell you. You speak of her as if she should be beatified. I find it hard to believe she's as saintly as all that. I have a feeling you're hiding something from me.
Well, before, in Scalives, Johanko was sort of, well, just a simple village girl. I never imagined I'd hear her talk in the way she does now. She's completely transformed. A simple village girl. I see. Do continue. That's about all I can tell you. Is that really everything? I have nothing more to add, Monsignor. Very well. Thank you, my son. One more thing before you go. Let me remind you that it's your Christian duty to report anything suspicious going on concerning the Church and the true faith. If you're aware of anything of the sort in these parts, if you prove yourself a commendable servant of the Church, I would also take that into account in judging Johanka's case. All right, Monsignor. I'll bear that in mind. May the Lord watch over you. Brother Nicodemus. You've heard something? The Inquisitor has decided that Yohanka will be tried, but he's agreed that I can defend her. That's really quite unusual. It must mean he hasn't come to a clear conclusion yet. Yes. I'll get her out of it. I'm afraid it may not be that easy. The thing is, I expect Yohanka will say the same things before the court that she's been preaching. What are you saying? Well, I've been thinking about what she's been saying, and it seems to me her preaching has a certain progression. Are you acquainted with the notion of the three orders of man? Not really, no. It's like this. It's said that everyone has their God-given place and purpose on Earth. Laboratores, Oratores, and Bellatores. Those who work, those who pray, and those who fight. The common folk are born to work, to reap the fruits of the earth and to obey the laws of God and man. It is the purpose of the nobles to protect the people and the church against all dangers and to maintain peace and justice on earth. 
And the church, in turn, has the task of caring for the spiritual welfare of all, ensuring the salvation of their souls and bringing solace to the people in times of hardship so that they can endure their earthly trials and enter the kingdom of heaven. But what's all that got to do with Yahanka? Well, I noticed in her first sermon she primarily addressed the concerns of the common folk, and in the second, she criticised the nobility. Choir! Ah. So you think she might start talking about the church? Yes, I'm afraid she might. I dread to think how that might end up. Henry, you must warn her against that. She must show humility before the Inquisitor, and the wisest course would be to admit to being wrong. She's rather stubborn, but perhaps she'll listen to you. But the Inquisitor said no one's allowed to see her. No one except the Inquisitor's own men. You'll just have to think something up. I'm afraid your hanker's fate is mainly in your hands now. I'm relying on you. Witnesses can be summoned for Yahanka's trial. So, I wanted to ask you if you'd give a testimony. Maybe some learned speech in her defence? I'd be glad to do it. Quiet. Yohanka deserves my help. Such testimonies could carry a lot of weight. You should try and get as many as you can. May the Lord watch over you. Adela, the Inquisitor is going to try Johanka in court. Oh, Lord. I hope she's acquitted. I was absolutely devastated when they took her away. I need people to speak in her defence, and I'd like to ask you to do it. I don't want to go there, really. I'm afraid of that Inquisitor, but... You helped me, and so did Johanka. It's only right that I should try and help her. But what am I supposed to say there? I'm just a simple village girl. I don't know anything about these things. That doesn't matter. You just be yourself. It should be enough to talk about all the good Johanka does here, and how she helps others. I'll send for you if you're needed. All right. Thanks a lot.
I am honoured that a knight such as you takes an interest in me. Have you got a bed for? Hi. For how long? Just the one. Sure. Here you go. You'll like it here. See you later. Goodman Pavel, you're still here. That's a relief. I was afraid I'd miss you. Yes, yes, still here, but not for long. I had some business to deal with, but now that's out of the way and I'm getting ready to leave. What was it you wanted? You might have heard that Yohanka was arrested by the Inquisitor and is facing trial. Indeed, word has reached me. Poor girl. I'd like to ask you to speak to the court in Yohanka's defense. Of course, Henry. You have my word. And the word of a burger of Colleen ought to mean something. But to speak in defense of someone accused of heresy is no small matter. What do you want me to say? The same thing you told me. That it was a sacred sign that you happened to be nearby when Johanka was speaking, and so on. True. I'll tell the bishop that. You can rest assured. Thank you very much. Please wait here a few more days for the court to convene, then I'll send for you. All right. For Johanka's sake, I'll wait. Good luck, then.
down. I need something from you, sir. I suppose you heard that Johanka was locked up by the Inquisitor and is facing charges of heresy. I did, and it's most disturbing news. What you might not know is that he's agreed that I can defend her at the trial. You? Do you even know what to say? Sure I know. It'll turn out just fine, trust me. But I need you to testify at the court. In Johanka's defense, of course. Naturally. You don't think I could just sit here and do nothing? Besides, the bishop has already insisted that I appear before the court. Oh. All right. One moment. I apologize if I was a little hasty. This whole affair has left me anxious. I appreciate that you want to defend her. However, I don't think it would have any effect. No offense, but I don't think you'll be able to achieve anything in court. I'm afraid the Inquisitor will judge as he sees fit, whatever anyone says. But I have an idea how you could help. Oh? How's that? Flee. With your hanka, of course. No, I don't think that's a good idea. I'm sure your hanka will be acquitted by the court and everything will be all right. Running would just confirm the Inquisitor's suspicions, and she'd always be looking over her shoulder. I don't agree. As I said, I don't believe you can affect the outcome of the court. If Johanka flees, yes, she'll have to lie low for a while, but in time it will all blow over. You can take her anywhere, as long as it's far enough from here. A girl like that will always find her feet. She can easily hide out somewhere where she's not known. Maybe there could even be a place for her on my estate. Think about it. But whatever you decide, if Johanka comes to any harm, you'll have me to answer to. I'm very fond of her. And her of me. And I don't want anything to happen to her, understand? But, if everything ends well, I'll show you my gratitude, I assure you. Good luck, then.
Stay firm all winter. Buy them before someone else does. Vegetables, fruits, apples, cucumbers, onions. Come get them. I'm glad you stopped by. I need your help with something. I'm sure you've heard. Your hanker was locked up by the Inquisitor. Who hasn't? The whole of Sasso is talking about it. And the Inquisitor was asking around about her. I'd like to ask you to appear before the court and say something in Johanka's defense. I can't say I'm keen on going there. But Johanka helped me. And you did too. I think it's only right that someone should say something good about her. Ah, thanks, Guta. I appreciate it. I'll send for you when it's time. God be with you. Father, the Inquisitor has had Yahanka thrown in jail. I know, son. He's planning a hearing. Rightly so. It's about time this whole matter was dealt with. What do you think about it, then? As I say, it's a good thing that the matter is being investigated. The things Yohanka has been preaching are, to say the least, disturbing. Who knows what these dreams are that she speaks of? And her words are only putting ideas in people's heads and leading them astray. Now instead of going to church, as they should, they go to her in the false belief that they will find solace. It's creating a chasm between the people and the church and leading them away from the true teaching left to us by Christ. They're misguided and swamped in heretical ideas. But Johanka is no heretic. She's a good, kind girl who's only trying to do the right thing. I'll defend her. Suit yourself. But mind you don't get ensnared in her fallacies and leave it to the bishop to judge the matter. Of course. Take care. Goodbye. Hey! What was it? Master Bailiff? Inquisitor Yaroslav is going to try Johanka. I know. He was here asking questions, too. Oh? What did he want to know? Various things, like how things are here, whether people are honest, whether we observe the fest days, and so forth. And then he asked about Johanka, about what she preaches, whether people come to listen to her and that. He's been talking to a lot of other people in Sasau too. I even heard that Katra, the swordsmith's wife, invited him to dine with them. That's interesting. Thanks for telling me. 
Was he just asking questions, or does he want you to testify before the court? Yes. He did ask me to testify, and I'm none too happy about it. I see. And what are you going to say about her? It depends what I'm asked, but there's not much I can say. I don't know your uncle very well. She seems virtuous and self-sacrificing to me. She's never done anything wrong, and no one here ever had a cross word to say about her. Until recently. Maybe some gossip about her and Sir Sebastian. But I've heard similar talk about half the women folk here. Your hunker has helped a lot of people here, selflessly. Her heart is in the right place. True. But then there's that preaching of hers. Folk have been falling out. They're split according to whether they believe your hunker or not. I don't know quite what to think of it myself. But I don't want to jump to conclusions. I'll wait and see what the learned bishop has to say. Couldn't you add something good to your testimony for your hunker? I would, uh, show my gratitude substantially. What? Are you trying to bribe me to commit perjury? The Inquisitor will hear how you're going about defending your hunker. Good Lord, no. I wouldn't dream of it. I express myself badly, that's all. What I was trying to say, rather clumsily, is that I'd be very glad if you were to speak on Johanka's behalf, because she really deserves it. Hmm. Well, I'll overlook your clumsiness then. Thank you, Master Bailiff. Good luck then. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. Thank you. 
God save you. Good luck then. I'm here about your hunker. You're that fella of hers, are you? What do you want? Uh, no. I'm just a friend of hers. Matthias is her, um, fella. Huh. God knows how many she has. I heard you invited Bishop Yaroslav to come and dine with you. Yes, so what? Bishop Yaroslav is an esteemed visitor to Sasa, And it's only fitting he should be suitably hosted by devout burghers. What have you got against your hunker? Nothing. The question is, what has she got against us? Tell me that. What? She turns up here and tries to tell us how to live our lives. Says the Virgin Mary whispers to her in the night. Yeah, I'm sure. To a simple village wench. I'd like to know who's really putting those ideas in her head. She's just getting people all worked up. Men, especially coming around here with her nonsense. Sasao is a decent, orderly place, I'll have you know. We don't want any trouble here. All this talk about hellfire and the end of the world. God of mercy. No one is interested in what she has to say. All they want is some spectacle. She ought to have thought twice before she started. Not that she wasn't warned. What do you mean, warned? As I said, she was told. Damn it, woman, tell me what you meant by that. I didn't mean anything by it. Out with it! If you must know, some of the fellas want to have it out with her and tell her to stop. No one wants her speeches here. But would she listen? No. 
The devil possessed her to bring harm to us. So it was you who sent those men? All I wanted was to protect the Sasso Fork against her poisonous tongue. And I'll do just that. The Monsignor asked me to testify in court. And I'll tell everything I know there. And I'll do likewise. Farewell. Go. Take care. Goodbye. God Almighty, has something happened to you? Take care. Yeah. Can you tell me anything about Inquisitor Yaroslav? Only as a myth, a dark fable, a horror tale told across the flickering embers of a midnight fire, wherever hardened warriors and minstrels gather to drink and compete in tales of blood-chilling terror. And now bugger off. God be with you. Take care. Why did you have your hanker imprisoned? I talked to her for a long time about the things she was saying and about her convictions. I warned her that she had to stop preaching in public. The concerns, or as she claims, she should come to me. Your hunker chose to ignore my warning and continued with her preaching. Obviously, I couldn't turn a blind eye to that kind of disobedience. 
But what's so bad about what Yahanka has been saying? Look here. It's simply unacceptable that anyone at all should come along and stand up in the market square and preach about God's will or how he or she interprets it. God gave us his teachings, which we must honor, and he showed us how to fulfill them. It is only those teachings that lead us on the path to salvation and God's grace. But understanding those teachings is no simple matter. It demands learning, time, and effort. That is one of the tasks of Holy Mother Church. What Johanka has been saying is dangerously close to heresy. She must be brought to see the error of her ways and her disruptive actions must cease. But Johanka hasn't done anything against God. On the contrary, she's devout and she's trying to redeem sinners. Perhaps, but she's also incited disobedience to the nobles. And that is a serious accusation. Think of it like this. You have to pass through a dark forest filled with hazards. Many paths lead to that forest, but only one will lead you safely through it. You know which is the right path, but others don't. Would you show them the right path? Or leave each to choose his own and very likely lose his way? I'd lead them along the right path. Of course. And surely you understand that the Holy Church is the one that knows that right path. And it is our duty to ensure that everyone should follow it and not stray from it. But that's just what Johanka was doing. Trying to show people the right path. And what makes you so convinced the path was the right one? The Virgin Mary told her. We only have her word for that, and even if her visions were real, she was at fault for interpreting them as she saw fit and preaching to the people. So you think she should have spoken to the parish priest about it? Exactly. And the priest would have sent for someone who would look into the matter. Like me, for instance. In short, it's not for her to interpret such things in her own way. If people believed her and started thinking what they want about it, Soon, everyone would be adrift in confusion, and the true message would be lost. Aha. Uh -huh. I think I understand. I'm glad you do, my son. But Johanka was visited by the Virgin Mary, so what she says can't be wrong. We only have her word for that, and even if her visions were real, she was at fault for interpreting them as she saw fit and preaching to the people. So you think she... Exactly. In short, if people... Aha. Uh -huh. I'm glad you... Monsignor, Johanka is just a simple village girl from Scalis. Are all these legal proceedings really necessary? They are. The mission of the Inquisition is quite unequivocal, and however trivial, this matter has a broader significance. What broader significance? No offense, but these things can't easily be explained to an uneducated boy like you. Still, I'm pleased that you take an interest. Unfortunately, I don't have time for this now. If you really want to know more, ask my assistant. After all, it is also our duty to guide others through the labyrinth of this world. Take care. God save. What can I do for you? The bishop told me this business with Johanka has a wider context, and that you tell me about it. Oh, very well. If the bishop says so. Look, it's like this. The world as a whole is not in a good state. For decades, people have been perishing from a terrible sickness. The Black Death. There's an anti-pope in Avignon in France who defies the authority of the throne of St. Peter. The people are frightened. Many of the nobles, instead of caring for peace on earth, are warring one against another. The authority of many monarchs, and even the emperor, is unfortunately too weak to put things to rights. Many scholars have even started to question established truths, and various contentious teachings have appeared, such as those of the Englishman, Wycliffe. The Black Death? 
It's the plague, my child. A dreadful disease that claimed countless lives. By the grace of God, these parts were not much afflicted, but it took a terrible toll in the surrounding countries. First, the Italian ports were stricken, Venice and Genoa, and then nearly the whole of Christendom. Some regard it as God's punishment for our sins, or even a sign of the approaching parousia. Paro what? The parousia, the second coming of Christ. The day when he returns to this world will mark the end of the ages. The dead will rise, and all people will face final judgment for their sins. Oh. Do you think that's going to happen? Most assuredly. But God alone knows when that will be. Oh. I hope it won't be too soon. The anti-pope? Unfortunately, that's a very serious and unpleasant topic. In short, alongside the legitimate pope, the Bishop of Rome and successor to St. Peter, another was elected and is usurping the highest glory of being Christ's representative here on earth. This is a most lamentable schism for the whole church and the Avignon usurper must be compelled to give up his unlawfully acquired office, so the church and the whole of Christendom may again be unified. So there are two popes? Not quite. There is only one, but there are those who refuse to recognize him. The election wasn't correct and valid, and I apologize. It wasn't wise to speak to you of this. It will only confuse you all the more. Better forget it. We won't talk about it anymore. You mentioned the Emperor. God wants unity, a universal order of the world. The Pope, Christ's deputy, and the Emperor, the supreme earthly ruler, crowned by the Pope himself, were instituted in order to preside over that unity. Unfortunately, the gleam of the imperial crown has become somewhat dulled, and his authority is no longer as absolute as it once was. What's worse, his election has become a political game involving many princes, and for a long time, the emperor himself has paid less attention to the affairs of the Christian world and more to his own concerns. I see. And what about these scholars? That's complicated. Some reject the authority of the Pope or the Church. Others dispute over the legitimacy of government or the nature of the world. Others rebel against teachings. All of them seek all sorts of arguments and explanations to support their claims and argue with others. All this contributes to uncertainty. One doubt leads to another. And soon, heretical ideas take hold. Ah. Uh-huh. But don't concern yourself. These are weighty matters for others who are learned in such things. Of course. Peace on Earth. Yes. Sadly, many countries are torn apart by strife and destroyed by war. In the lands of the English, the French... The Italians, in the Holy Roman Empire, Christians are raising their weapons against other Christians. Love for our neighbor has given way to the pursuit of mammon and high office. They plot against each other to gain advantage. You've seen it yourself, right here in Bohemia, and even in Sassau. Yes, and in Scalitz. Indeed, my son, regrettably. But what does all this mean? What has it got to do with Johanka? As I say, the order of the world is shaken. Division is spreading, and confusion and iniquity thrive. It's the handiwork of Lucifer, who wants to lay waste to God's creation. Many have succumbed to his false truths and spread them to others. That's why we must be 
alert to his snares, especially in these times. Be wary of false prophets and stick to the path of the true faith and personal virtue. And Johanka? Just so. I fear she too may have been ensnared by Lucifer's deceptions and the false belief that she's been visited by the Blessed Virgin. These machinations of the devil must be faced and stamped out before they take root and cause more evil. But we must not despair. Even those who have strayed from the right path may be redeemed. And that's why your hunker's case is important. Although, it may not be immediately apparent. I understand. But what does all this mean? As I say, it's the handiwork. That's why. I know someone like that. There's a charlatan who's been peddling wares around these parts. All sorts of amulets, relics and the likes that are supposed to cure all ills. Yes. I've heard something about that. If you should know of any similar iniquities, the Monseigneur will be glad to listen to you. And just these that we must... And that's... I understand. Thanks. I won't bother you anymore. God be with you. <laughs> Monsignor, I've heard of various irregularities in the province that might be of interest to you. Very good, my son. A good Christians certainly shouldn't conceal such things. Please, speak. That's all. All right, Henry. Thank you. God be with you. Jesus Christ. How are things going here? Quite well. It's a lot of work. But I have a feeling I'm doing something useful. Johanka and brother Nicodemus showed me what to do. And I already know a thing or two. Sounds good. I have a roof over my head. Enough to eat. And they even pay me a bit. It's really quite fine. I'm glad to hear it. And you've had no trouble from anyone? No. Everyone has been kind. It's sweet of you to care, Henry. Goodbye.
I won't get any sleep. I just won't get any sleep. I won't get any sleep. I just won't get any sleep.
I'm at your service, Sir Knight. God be with you. Good God, you look terrible. I'll see you later. Hey! Who are you? Good luck to you.
car now. Hey, clear off. No one's allowed to talk to your uncle. Bishop Yaroslav's orders. I'm quite aware of that, my man. I'm with the Bishop's entourage. Look, show me that. Ah, I see. All right, sir. You can talk to her. Thank you. You can really read. A little? Yes. That's why they put me here. Very good. You're impressed. Now leave us, please. Certainly, sir. Take care. Your hunker. Are you all right? Yes, Henry. I'm fine. I'm glad to see you. I spoke to the Inquisitor. He wants to put you on trial. I know. It's all in God's hands now. No, it's not. I mean, it is, of course. But the bishop has allowed me to defend you. You want to defend me? Thank you. Henry, that's very kind of you. But you needn't bother. Our lady won't let anything bad happen to me. I am her instrument. And I am completely in her hands. Everything that's happening is her sacred will. I won't stand by with my arms folded. You need someone to testify for you. As I said, I will defend you. If you insist, maybe it's the will of the Virgin that you came to me. So be it then. I went to Ujits, like you asked. That's good, Henry. I hope you purged yourself of your sins. I did the pilgrimage of penance, like you said. And in the church, I begged the Virgin Mary for forgiveness. And she will bless you, Henry. You're a good man. Remember that. And don't stray into wrongdoing again. I won't. I made a donation to the church, too. And the parish priest there, Father Godwin, he was asking about you. Was he? Well, what did you tell him? Oh, just about everything that's going on and the things you were saying. He was quite moved by it, to tell the truth. He even gave me some writings. You see? Maybe Our Lady is giving you a sign, too. What did Bishop Yaroslav ask you about? All sorts of things. Like how the Virgin Mary visits me, what she shows me, and about preaching to the people. Actually, he was really quite pleasant. He asked me about scallops, whether I go to church, and a lot of other things. And in the end, he told me I mustn't speak in public again about the visitations and that. But I couldn't obey an order like that. The Blessed Virgin is testing me, and I have to do what she asks, no matter who or what stands in the way. I'd say he wasn't too happy about that. No. He came there with his men, dispersed the people, and had me arrested and locked up here. About that trial, Yes, the trial. I'll get some people who will testify for you in court. 
But Brother Nicodemus is worried you'll say things that will make the Inquisitor angry. Please don't do that. You have to talk to him respectfully, answer his questions with humility, and not say anything to annoy him. And don't say anything against the church or priests. Please. I'll say only what the Blessed Virgin wants me to say. Johanka, please. You mustn't say anything against him or the church. Be contrite. Maybe even admit you might have been wrong about some things. I don't think the Inquisitor is so bad. If you submit to him, he'll drop the charges. You too now. You're speaking exactly the same as his assistant. The two of you joined forces against me, did you? I've nothing to do with him. I didn't even know he was here. Believe me, I'm really trying to help you. You don't believe me anymore, do you? I do, Johanka. I believe you. But in court, you must speak reasonably, prudently. A lot depends on it. Maybe even your life. I appreciate your concern for me, Henry. Really, I do. But you must understand. I can't deny that the Virgin Mary visits me, or what she wants to tell us. Not now. After everything that's happened, I can't. Otherwise, she won't heal Matthias. But you have to consider yourself and what's good for you. Surely you don't want to be convicted of heresy. That won't do anyone any good, neither you nor Matthias. I've already told you. Everything is in the hands of the Blessed Virgin. I will accept with humility the fate she grants me. A sacra. This is going to be a right mess. Yeah. I spoke to Johanka. And did you manage to convince her? I'm afraid not. She's stubborn. She says she answers only to the Blessed Virgin. Oh dear, Henry. That's not good at all. What about her family? Doesn't she have a relative she might listen to? No. None of them survived the raid on Scalas. She has no one at all left in the world. Poor child.
Matthias? You're better. Henry? Is it you? Yes, it's me. Who else would it be? Oh, I'm glad you're here, Henry. Oh, I feel a bit better now. Oh, I'd even like to eat something. I must tell your hunker. She'll be glad. Your hunker's not here. Oh? Where is she? Oh, how to begin? Look, things got a bit complicated here. The main thing is... Johanka is in jail, awaiting trial. What? <coughs> what happened? Well, she claims she's being visited by the Virgin Mary and seeing visions. And she was preaching to people about it. But this Inquisitor heard about it and came to investigate. He locked her up, and he's going to try her for heresy. What? The Virgin Mary? Visiting Johanka? Yes. So she says. Trouble is, Johanka is very obstinate, and she's likely to say things in court that will just make it worse for her. Listen, Matthias, I need you to go with me and talk to her. Maybe together we can convince her to see sense. I wish I could. But I'm still too weak to even get out of bed. I'm sorry, Henry. I just can't do it. You know what? Tell her. I'm feeling better, and I agree with everything you tell her. Give her this dice. She'll understand. It'll almost be like I was there with you. Dice? Oh. It's a long story. Johanka knows all about it. Or you can ask Teresa, too. All right. If you say so. Henry, please, look out for her. And make sure nothing happens to her. I'll do my best. Goodbye. I can't. I just can't. Yeah. About that trial? Yes, the trial. I spoke to Matthias. What? But he's lying in a fever, isn't he? No, he's much better. He asked about you. He wanted to come here, but he's not strong enough yet. Oh, that's wonderful. You see, our lady helped him. And now, I have to do my part. But doesn't it mean that you've already done your part? Well, I... Uh... What would be the point of it all if the Inquisitor were to have you imprisoned now? Or even worse? It's a message. A final test. I mustn't fail now, after everything. But you already passed the Virgin Mary's message on. Many people heard it, and many of them have amended their ways. You certainly haven't failed. Look, Matthias gave me this for you, and he asked me to tell you to look out for yourself. Thank you, Henry. Go now. 
I need to rest. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah! Good health to you. Father, didn't I see you outside practicing swordplay? I wouldn't have expected that from a man of the cloth. With a stick. I practiced with a stick. A reminder of my youth and days gone by, and it helps keep me in good form. Father, I'm here about Johanka again. You remember what I told you about her? Of course. It's not the kind of thing that happens every day. True. And now the Inquisitor, Bishop Yaroslav of Beneshov, has come to Sasal. He had Yahanka locked up, and he wants to put her on trial for heresy. Shit. That sounds like a really fucked up situation. Exactly. Father, I wanted to ask if you come to the court and say something. Something learned in Yohanka's defense. 
What could I possibly say? I only know what you told me. I've never even laid eyes on this Yohanka. I'd be of no use to you at all. Oh. If you're sure. And could you advise me what to do? Tackling the Papal Inquisitor? Best advice is don't do it. But let's see. I gave you those writings from Matthew of Yanov, didn't I? He was a great scholar. Maybe something in that would convince the Inquisitor. The Inquisitor will interrogate Yohanka too. Try and get to her, and tell her to do whatever the Inquisitor asked of her. Even to recant what she said. That ought to help. All right. I'll try it. Thanks, Father. <sighs> Jesus, lad. This is some serious mess you've gotten yourself mixed up in. God be with you.
Yeah. 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 That's a good boy. That's my boy.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah! Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Greetings, good night. Have you got a bed for? I suppose I could. For how long? Just the one. All right. Here you are. You like. See you later.
God be with you. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. Good health to you. I'm interested in your uh, services. And what is it you'd like? Proper bath. And my clothes need washing. I'm sure you'll be extremely satisfied. God be with you. About the irregularities in these parts. I'm listening. There are interesting things in the monastery. Oh, various things that people are talking about. There's a lot of talk, but actually, nothing that would in As you wish. A demon's skull was found on the church building site. Hmm, yes. I heard something about it. A disturbing report. Tell me what you know about it. It was a deception, sir. Someone made it with evil intentions to frighten people. I found the skull and brought it to the local knacker. He confirmed it was a human skull with animal horns stuck on. You did the right thing, Henry, in uncovering the deception and in telling me about it. Some women in Ujit went to the herbalist for magic ointment. Then they went to the woods, smeared this ointment on themselves, and engaged in all sorts of incantations and spells. What? Witchcraft? God have mercy. They must be brought to justice. Who is this herbalist they visited? Not to worry, Monsignor. Father Godwin put a stop to it. Well, that's good news at least. Witchcraft will not be tolerated under any circumstances. There were Valdensians hiding in Ujits. Really? And how did you find out about it? Sir Hanush sent me to help the vicar track them down and catch them. So, Sir Hanush had an interest in finding them? 
Yes, that's right. I'm pleased to hear it. It's not always possible to see eye to eye with secular lords in such matters. And how did it end up with the members of the sect? They fled. The vicar is still trying to track them down. That's unfortunate. Let's hope the vicar succeeds promptly in his mission. The former parish priest of Rovna, Father Simon, went missing one day. Everyone thought he'd fled from the province, but in fact he just went to the woods and became a hermit. I see. Why did he do that? Because he got some girl pregnant. The child died during birth, though, and the mother too. He took it to be retribution for his sin. So he fled far from people, because he didn't feel fit to be their pastor anymore. That's very interesting indeed. Where is this Father Simon now? I tracked him down in the woods and talked him into going back to Rovna. They needed a parish priest there, and Simon was convinced taking on the task would make amends for his sin. Interesting. Father Simon's story is certainly remarkable. Whether his actions are appropriate for a cleric is another matter, of course. Thank you for telling me about this. Well, the parish priest in Ujits is rather, uh, unorthodox. Not that he's a bad person, not at all. He takes good care of his flock, no doubt. It's just that he drinks quite a lot. In fact, he's even said mass while drunk. And, um, he keeps a concubine. Hmm, that distresses me. All the more so because what you describe isn't at all unique amongst the clergy. Thank you for telling me, Henry. Matters like this certainly must be addressed. That's all, Monsignor. All right, Henry. Thank you. And I hope you're not keeping anything from me. I'm ready, Monsignor. Excellent. I have also completed my investigation. We may commence then with the proceedings? Yes. Good. I will send for everyone who is to bear witness and have Johanka brought before the court. We'll commence first thing tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. One more thing. These are solemn proceedings that demand a certain decorum. I won't tolerate any clanking armor or otherwise inappropriate attire. You will wear this robe. Of course. Thank you, Monsignor. Very well. Rest now, and we'll meet in the morning. See you later. Let us begin. I, Bishop Yaroslav of Beneshov, by the grace of God, Papal Inquisitor, have come here to Sassau in response to reports of Marian visitations and the preaching activities of one Johanka, a commoner. And I have found, indeed, that by her arbitrary word, she's been leading good people astray and encouraging their rebellion against their betters. Furthermore, Johanka has attempted to usurp the glory that belongs alone to Holy Mother Church and to appoint herself as an intermediary of the wisdom and grace of Almighty God. This does not behove any lay person, and certainly not a woman. It is therefore necessary to remedy her transgressions, and to investigate the extent and the basis of her misguidance. Or, as the case may be, heresy. Henry of Scarlets has elected to appear here in Johanka's defense, and his wish has been allowed. Anyone who elects to speak here does so before God, and shall be bound by a most sacred oath to speak only the truth. 
I will first hear the testimony of Father Fabian, who sent me word of this matter, and who should best know what deeds are done in his parish. Father Fabian, will you tell us what Johanka has been proclaiming? Johanka claims that she has received visitations from Our Lady, the Holy Mother of God, who speaks to her in the night. It is an outrageous claim that I hold to be entirely untrue. And did Johanka come forward to ask your advice regarding these alleged apparitions? She did not. Instead, she took it upon herself to spread her supposed wisdom to the people. And prior to this, did Johanka attend church? Did you see her at your sermons, Father? I did not, Monsignor. What's more, the parish priest of Scalitz is staying at my presbytery just now. Johanka knows him well enough, but she didn't come to see even him. I believe Johanka is deliberately avoiding the church. Instead, she meets her followers secretly in the woods and preaches to them. Either she made everything up, or the devil himself is whispering in her ear. If I may, Monsignor, the Virgin Mary really does speak to Johanka. Is that so? And on what do you found this claim? It couldn't be the devil. Johanka lives at the monastery, doesn't she? Close to the cave of St. Procopius. St. Procopius, who overpowered the devil and cast him down, did he not? The evil one would hardly dare return to the dominion of the saints to whisper in Johanka's ear. Surely that's obvious. It's true, Henry. An evil spirit, or even Lucifer himself, would have little power in the vicinity of the remains of St. Procopius. But the fact that she lives at the monastery doesn't mean that she is not misguided. What's more, she is an interloper there herself, who would not even be tolerated if it weren't for Brother Nicodemus. Yes, Father. I am aware of the impropriety of her presence in the monastery grounds. But in this, I must concur with Henry. Monsignor, would you please hear the testimony of the respected burgher Pavel of Colleen? He will testify that Johanka isn't making anything up. Well, I'm very curious what this Pavel will tell us. Call Pavel of Colleen. But I doubt it will surpass Peter Parler's Church of St. Bartholomew. I'm a little surprised to find a counselor of Colleen here, especially you who makes no secret of your animosity towards Sassau Monastery. True. Although I have only criticized the monastery in secular matters of property, which concerned a dispute with the town of Colleen and therefore my duties as a counselor. Pavel, please tell us about your recent experience. I'm all ears, Goodman. Monsignor, some years ago I hid some money in Sassau Woods. When I found myself here again recently and heard Johanka's words, I remembered that matter. Johanka made me aware of my inordinate love of wealth, and I resolved to donate the money in question for the common good of Sassau. For this, I needed an honest intermediary who would locate the money. In this, too, Johanka helped me by putting me in touch with Henry here. By the grace of God, he found the long-lost treasure and donated it for the good of Sassau. The whole matter I regard as the intervention of the Holy Spirit. An interesting tale, Goodman Pavel. Not only that, it's also evidence of divine providence and that Johanka isn't making anything up. She wasn't possessed by an evil spirit. On the contrary, Our Lady really did speak to her. I must concur with that, Monsignor, because I was subsequently also visited in a dream by the Virgin Mary. What? You too? Yes. She appeared in a blue cloak and waved to me. Do you swear that what you say is true, Pavel? I swear by Almighty God, Monsignor. Remarkable. Truly remarkable. Very well, Goodman. Thank you for your testimony. You may stand down. Even if it were true, why would Our Lady choose a simple village girl like Johanka? Monsignor, with your permission, I'd like to draw attention to the work of the great scholar Matthew of Yanov. He exalted women like Johanka. 
He said that God created what is weak in order to bring shame on what is strong. That's why God turns to women who love Christ and blesses them with such visions so that they can point out and rectify the vanities of men. It can't be heresy if the learned masters of universities write such tracts. What you say is remarkable. Matthew's work, which you mentioned, does speak to Johanka's benefit, but I wouldn't have expected that someone of your station has even heard of the master of Yanov. How did you come by his work? Well, Johanka pressed me to go on a pilgrimage of repentance. I went to Ujits, where there is a Marian church, and there, the parish priest gave me a copy of the text. That's surprising indeed. Especially that you are at all capable of reading such a work and understanding it. You're quite a fountain of unexpected skills, Henry. Thank you, Monsignor. Let's proceed then. Is there anything else you want to add, Henry? Yes. Please call Brother Nicodemus. He has something to say about it. He's a man of learning and knows more about these things than I do. Certainly. I also wish to hear his testimony. Call him. Nicodemus, for some time you were insisting that the infirmary needed extra pairs of hands. It was only at your request that Johanka, against all accepted custom, was allowed inside the monastery walls. I've already spoken to Abbot Peter about her, but please tell me how Johanka behaved. Monsignor, I must stand behind Johanka. The girl is a treasure, selfless, charitable, and good-hearted. She helped more people here than anyone else. I have never seen her do anything that would contradict the behavior of a good Christian. She never discussed questions of faith with me. She was always focused only on her work, which she carried out impeccably. And afterwards, when she began making claims of Marian apparitions? Yes. Yes. That's quite an extraordinary thing. The things she preached couldn't have come from any of the brothers, or from books, because she can't read. Therefore, I believe the Blessed Virgin really spoke to her. Nonsense. She made the whole thing up, or someone did prompt her. You're very keen to defend her, brother. It makes me wonder whether she didn't get her wisdom from you. I already said she got none of it from me, and I would never lie before Almighty God. But it seems to me it's the inadequate education of the good parish priest here that's behind his flimsy litany. What? Am I to be criticized by someone who's m more a gardener than a scholar? Father Fabian, let Nicodemus speak. And you, Nicodemus. Stick to the point, if you please. Certainly, Monsignor. Please allow this humble gardener to put the good priest right, because he evidently knows nothing of the fact that other women before Johanka had similar experiences. Blessed Hildegard of Bingen also had similar visions. And what about St. Bridget, or Elizabeth of Schernau, or Catherine of Siena? Like them, Johanka here only humbly spreads the message of Our Lady, she does not present herself as an intermediary of divine mercy. Please do not condemn your hunker, Bishop Yaroslav. In my judgment, her visions are genuine and her words sincere. Thank you, Nicodemus. Your plea is very bold. But what you say about Hildegard and the others is true. You can rest assured I will consider your words very carefully. Fabian, have you had trouble with heretics before, or had any suspicions of heresy here? Not much, Monsignor. Now and then there have been traveling preachers and various charlatans here and there, although I did recently get reports that there were members of the Waldensian sect hiding in the province. Yes, I know of that. Henry here was helping the vicar to track them down. Unfortunately, though, they managed to flee. Thank you, Father Fabian. That's all. 
I'm glad to have been of service, Monsignor. I thank you also, Brother Nicodemus. You too may stand down. Call Hoshek, Bailiff of Sassau. Bailiff, has there been any suspicious activity here recently? Well, there have been cumins on the rampage in the woods and on the roads, and all sorts of bands of footpads and brigands around the province. But otherwise, it's all been peaceful and quiet here, Monsignor. How reassuring. And what of Johanka, Bailiff? Has she been inciting the people here? I couldn't tell you much about her. I hardly know her. She hasn't broken any laws, and folks speak well of her, for the most part. Although it's true, things have been a bit tense here, on account of her speeches. Continue. Quite a lot of people have been going to her since she started with that preaching. Some are even convinced she's a holy woman. From what I heard, they bring her small gifts or ask for her advice or blessing. Sacrilege! People coming for blessings and bringing her gifts. That has all the makings of a cult. Oh, I don't know, Monsignor. Begging your pardon, but that's overstating it a bit. But it's true. They met outside town, too, and it came to a bit of a skirmish. Nothing serious happened, though. Fellas punching each other in the mouth. If you'll excuse me, Monsieur, that happens all the time. Well, that's about all I can tell you, Monsignor. Thank you, Bailiff. I will be all. And you, Henry, you've been around Johanka more than anyone. Do people come to her for blessings? Well, they come to her, yes. But I swear she never blessed anyone. But when someone comes to her, she tries to help them, like a good Christian. Henry, I'm sure you're aware that to lie here is a mortal sin and a crime. I do. And I'm not lying. All right. Anything else? Yes, Monsignor. I'd like you to listen to Adela. She amended her life and doesn't live in sin anymore, all because of Johanka. Her testimony will show that Johanka is an exemplary Christian, not the leader of some cult. All right. Call this Adela. Adela, until recently you were living in the nearby town of Ledechko, is that so? Y yes And how did you make a living there? I... I served at the baths, laundering and repairing clothes, and preparing the baths. Is that all? No. Sometimes I went with the fellas and... and... Um, pleasured them... for money. But I don't do it anymore. I swear. I changed my ways on account of Johanka and Henry here, and now I lead a decent life. You're saying you simply gave up your... profession? Yes. Henry convinced me, and Johanka took me in. Very well. Thank you. And since you left Ledechko, have you sinned with anyone? No, Monsieur, I haven't. Good. May God give you the will to maintain your newfound virtue, Adela. And now... Please answer one more question. You're living with a Johanka now, yes? Tell me what she says to the people who come to her. Well, they come with all sorts of problems. Some want just advice. Some want her maybe to bless them or talk to Our Lady for them. They believe she's a holy woman. So, Johanka accepts gifts from these people and then gives them her blessing? No, it's not like that. Johanka doesn't bless anyone. And she doesn't want any gifts from anyone either. Folk just bring them. The things they bring, she gives them out to the sick and wounded. She doesn't keep anything. I swear. You swear? Yes. I swear to it all, Monsignor. I'd never lie to you. All right. You may go. Please hear also the testimony of Guta, wife of the tailor, Ambrose. She can also bear witness to Johanka's good deeds. All right. 
I promised I'd hear all the witnesses you brought. Call her. Guta, you witnessed Johanka's first sermon. What did she speak of? About how we should be virtuous and not sinful. And then you went to see Johanka, didn't you? I did, Monseigneur. I, I wanted to ask her for help, and she did. I was praying for my husband for a long time and begging God to help him. And I believe my prayers were answered, and he sent Johanka to us. Hmm. And there were others who came to her seeking help? Yes, Monseigneur. There were. And that shrine, and the gifts. People brought them to Johanka so she'd help them? I couldn't tell you. But she helped me. Without any of that. Didn't you bring her any gifts? Well, yes, but that was after. Just some old cloth for bandages and bed covers, so she could help others like she helped me. Every evening, I pray for Johanka and thank the Blessed Virgin for sending her to us. I see. Thank you. You may go. Very well. Now, I wish to question Katra, the swordsmith's wife. Bring her here. Katra, you are a respected townswoman who has a good overview of what goes on in Sassau. As you told me earlier, will you tell me now what you know of Johanka and her deeds? Yes, I'll tell you everything, Monsignor. Johanka has been putting ideas into people's heads and causing chaos. What right has she to preach to us? A simple girl like that. As if we were bad people here, and she herself is a sinner. And an adulterer, a loose woman she is, who goes with anyone. And even fornicated with a custodian, Sir Sebastian. That's nothing but slander. Quiet, Henry. I will deal with this matter in a moment. Forgive me, Monsignor, but Catra isn't telling the whole truth. What do you mean, Henry? She's the one who set a band of thugs on Johanka several times to cause trouble for her and threaten her. She wanted to drive Johanka out of town. That's not the deed of a good Christian, plotting intrigues like that. She admitted it all to me. Is that true? I, uh... I only did what was necessary to stop her from bringing us to harm. Monsignor, you can see yourself that Catra holds a grudge against Johanka. Yes. I must agree with Henry. In view of your apparent antagonism towards Johanka, whatever the reasons for it, I cannot allow you to influence these proceedings. You should have reported your concerns to Father Fabian instead of acting willfully as you did. But... she's bringing us nothing but trouble. I will be the judge of her transgressions, not you. Nevertheless... I have also heard rumors of Johanka's immorality that cannot be ignored. Bring here the Sassar custodian, Sir Sebastian von Berg. Sir Sebastian, my apologies for raising the matter, but doubts have been cast on your virtue. I have been told that you have shared your bed with Johanka. Is it true? Monsignor, with respect, this is surely some mistake. Johanka is not a bad girl and by no means a heretic. Noted. Now please answer my question. Did you share your bed with Johanka or not? Uh... Yes... But she's not... Silence! So... Johanka not only incites rebellion against the nobles, but also seduces them into sin and immorality. Monsignor, I've known Johanka a long time. And she's a virtuous girl, and a good Christian. She just needed support. 
It wasn't a bodily desire, but one of the soul. Consider what she went through. Her whole family slaughtered, and everyone here turned their backs on her, but for Sir Sebastian. Anyone can make a mistake, can't they? And she's sorry for her mistake. Monsignor, let's put a stop to this. It's undignified for us both, and for Johanka. She's no heretic, just a confused young girl to whom fate has been less than kind. Her confusion will pass. All it needs is for someone to explain to her the error of her ways. There's no necessity for extreme measures. Sir Sebastian, be so kind as to leave the judgment of Johanka's transgressions to me. You may go. Henry? You proved yourself an exemplary and faithful servant of the Church when you drew my attention to the many iniquities that have been happening hereabouts. You've been very keen to appear here in Johanka's defense. You've said a lot about her, but please, tell me why you've been helping her all this time. Because she speaks the words of Our Lady. That can't be ignored. I would be disrespecting the Blessed Virgin if I turned my back on Johanka. So, you two are still convinced of that? We'll have to see what Johanka says about it herself. That will be all, Henry. Monsignor, please permit me to say one more thing. I heard some wise words at a sermon in Scalitz, and I think I should share them here. It's our Christian duty to fight against sin. But we must love the sinner. So I beg you, Monsignor. Be lenient to Johanka. You're right, Henry. Those are wise words. Nothing remains but to question Johanka herself. Johanka of Scarlet, you've heard the accusations brought against you, and we have also heard several testimonies. I already questioned you earlier. Johanka, do you wish to revise the answers you gave earlier? Or do you stand by what you said? I stand by everything I told you. So be it. I expressly forbade you to continue preaching, and you promised not to do so. You defied my instruction and broke your promise. Why? Forgive me, Monsignor. But I could do nothing else. Our Lady asked me to do it, and I couldn't refuse her. She did visit me, but now I admit that I might have been wrong about some things. I don't understand these learned matters, and I was too hasty in speaking to the people. I regret that I didn't go first to Father Fabian and tell him about everything. I... I want to apologize here, before the Blessed Virgin. If I misunderstood something, and said untruths or brought shame on the church, I didn't intend to do anything like that. I ask Our Lady's forgiveness, and I will accept any punishment that you impose on me. I'm pleased that you've seen the error of your ways and confessed to your mistakes. These proceedings are closed. You may leave. Johanka will now hear my verdict. Johanka, are you aware you're facing very grave accusations? Yes, Monseigneur. I am. You stand accused preaching from ignorance and leading the people away from the protective embrace of Holy Mother Church. If you do not recant, you will suffer grave consequences. Pride and ignorance clouded her reason. Child, it would distress me greatly to have to pronounce a verdict of condemnation.
speak that. Do you recant your sermons and swear never again to preach to the people? And are you prepared to repent? As God is my witness, I did all this with good intentions. And I sincerely repent of my sins of conceit. I confess that I was led by my pride to believe the Virgin Mary chose me to put the world to rights. And I set myself above the learned prelates of the church and the divine right of nobility. I repent my sins of pride and ask forgiveness. I will do as you command, Father. Johanka has confessed her guilt. And from this day forward, she'll be a good and humble Christian again. She shall no longer indulge in philosophizing and shall in her penitent's robe go every day to pray at the church of St. Martin. Therefore, I ask you to welcome Johanka back into your midst and hold no grudge against her. If the Virgin Mary should happen to visit you again, tell Father Fabian that he will send for me. All right? Yes, Signor. Very good. Johanka was cleared of all charges of heresy, and the Inquisitor, his job done and his verdict pronounced, left Sassau for good. Matthias recovered from his illness, and he and Johanka finally met again. It was a happy sight to see them both alive and well after their trials. Who knows what awaits them now? Or all of us, for that matter. How are Save, you, Henry? Henry? How are you getting on? I can't complain. I'm glad to see you back on your feet. Yeah, thanks a lot, Henry. Your hunker told me all about how you helped her. And actually, me too. It's incredible. All the things that happened. You're right there. I'm in your debt, Henry. For both of us. Ah, uh, don't mention it, Matthias. You'd have done the same, wouldn't you? Of course I would. See? Next time I need help, I know who to come to. <laughs> anyway, what else is new? What about Johanka? Well, 
She has to go to St. Martin's to do penance every day. Uh, you know that's not what I'm asking about. Uh, uh, yeah. It's all good. Of course, she's very busy. And me too. But we'll go dancing together next time there's some feet here. That is, I'd like to. If she would too, but she's a bit ashamed. Why? On account of the preaching and the court and everything. She's worried about being among people. Ah, I see. Well, that'll pass with time, believe me. It took me and Teresa a while to get somewhere too. Sometimes I feel like it's been a whole year. Like you say, time will probably fix it. So what will you do now, Matthias? Or the two of you? I wish I knew, Henry. For now, I'll work in the monastery grounds. Maybe even on the construction. Until they throw us out. They don't want to let you stay here. Well, it seems the abbot isn't happy about so many lay people right outside the monastery walls. Nicodemus is trying to put a word in for us. And for Adela, too. But the abbot can be very obstinate. He wasn't happy about Johanka being here at all. And then, with all that happened after... I see. So what will you do if you have to leave? I really don't know. We'll stay until harvest, at least. There'll be plenty of work, and then... We'll see. Maybe we can find jobs somewhere around here. But more likely we'll go away to other parts, if we can save some money. I don't know where, though. Well, I might have something for you. Sir Divish appointed me bailiff of Pribislavitz. After you finish with the harvests, the two of you could go there. There'll be lots of work there for a clever pair like you. Jesus, Henry. You've really come up in the world. That would be great. Thanks. We'll go there, right after harvest. It's good to know we'll have a place for the winter. I won't forget you for this, Henry. And for everything you've done. Johanka? Henry, I'm still muddled from all that happened. But I want to thank you for standing by me. You've done more for me than anyone else I know. You don't have to thank me. I only did what I considered right. I'm still grateful, though. I'm in your debt. Goodbye. God be with you, Henry. How's it going here? Good. Actually, better than before. Matthias is here with me. I go to St. Martin's Church often, and Father Fabian is strict with me, but he explains many things to me about God and faith, and he tests me to see if I understand correctly. Then he always leaves me alone to pray and do penance. And what about the Virgin Mary? Does she still visit you? No, not anymore. Not since the trial. Whatever anyone says, she did appear to me before, just between the two of us. I think I did what she wanted of me anyway. Perhaps I was too hasty and committed the sin of pride and got confused about some things. But even so, after all, Matthias recovered and that must mean something. I also think you spoke well, and you were right about some things. And I believe Our Lady did appear to you. Thank you. Let's talk no more about it. Only Our Lady herself knows what her intentions were. And that's how it should be. In church, I always prayed to her for forgiveness. I hope she hears my prayers. And how is Matthias doing now? Good, I think. He's getting his strength back. How we're doing isn't for your ears, Henry. There's one thing I'm curious about. What did the Inquisitor say after we left? He spoke about God and the Blessed Virgin, but I'm not supposed to tell anyone. I probably shouldn't say anything, but I think, in the end, even the Bishop believed that Our Lady really did appear to me. What, the Inquisitor? But... Shh! I never said a word, all right? Ah, yeah, sure, I understand. Now, I need to rest a while. What will you do now? I have to stay in Sassau for some time, on account of Father Fabian. 
But the abbot wants me to leave the monastery as soon as possible. And then... I wish I knew. I'll have to talk to Matthias about it. But I don't want to trouble him with it now, after he came so close to dying. Take care. Johanka was cleared of all accusations, despite the things that were said in the trial, which you heard yourself, sir. Johanka has been cleared and is safe, it's true. Hey. And now she's with that fellow, Matthias. But I suppose it's best that way. I should never have started that affair with her. It was unreasonable on my part and unjust towards her. Now I can see the wrongness of my actions, thanks to her. In the future, I'll be a better, more virtuous person. I believe that's what she wanted. May she find happiness with Matthias. As long as I'm in Sassau and have it in my power, they shall have my protection. It means I... I also owe an apology to you, Henry of Scullitz. Thank you for doing what you did for Johanka. Recently, I had a new weapon made for myself. But... I think it's more fitting that you should have it. Here it is. Let's speak no more of your hunger. Go in peace. Good luck, then. Huh? Well, I never... 